In this video, we are going to continue building applications with Python and Olama. We are going to see a different way to use the generate and chat endpoints of the Olama REST API, but we won't access the API directly, so we won't have to worry about dealing with JSON or HTTP requests. The Olama package is a Python API for building applications with Olama. The package abstracts a lot of the cruft, the boilerplate, that we had to implement and duplicate over the last few videos. We'll be using two functions from the Olama package, generate and chat. The names imply they match up to the generate and chat endpoints we saw in the last few videos. So let's look at the generate function first. The generate function accepts two arguments which correspond to the keys of the JSON body for the generate endpoint of the Olama REST API. First is the name of the model, and second is the prompt. The function returns a value of type generate response. To see the output from the LLM, all you have to do is print out the response attribute of the generate response object. Now since the return value from the generate function is strongly typed, we can annotate it with a type hint and this will help Visual Studio Code suggest completions in the editor. You'll see more of this in the demo. Now let's move on to the chat function. It accepts two arguments which correspond to the keys of the JSON body for the chat endpoint of the Olama REST API, and first again is the name of the model, and the second is the list of messages that will prepare the chat session. The return value of the chat function is of type chat response, and to get the output from the LLM, you print out the message.content attribute of the response. Now recall for the REST API, we had to add a key to the JSON body instructing the endpoint not to stream the response. With the Olama package, the default is not to stream the response. However, the Olama package makes it easy to stream a response. First, for either the generate or chat function, add the keyword argument stream with a value of true. Then you can iterate over the response in a for loop. Each streamed chunk is going to be either a generate response or chat response object. In the case of the streaming response for the chat function, you would access the message content attribute of each chunk. If you're enjoying this video and want to see more, click the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to hit the like button. To be notified of future videos, click the bell to know as soon as new videos are published. Let's take a look at how to do this with Visual Studio Code. The Olama package is installed with pip. So pip install Olama. Now I'm going to use a Jupyter Notebook for this demo. For details on how to set up Jupyter Notebook in Visual Studio Code, I've got a video that I've linked in the description below. Now the first thing to do is import the chat and generate functions and the chat response and generate response types from the Olama module. Now I'm going to call the generate function. I'm going to pass it a model name of Llama 3.2. And for the prompt, I'm going to use compose a haiku about Visual Studio Code. Now remember that the response can be annotated using the generate response type. All right, now I'll execute this cell. Now I'm going to use the dir function to see what the members of the response are. Now it may not be enough room on the screen to show all of them, so you can open it in a new tab by clicking this text editor link. And you'll see down here that one of the members is called, where is it? There it is, response. Now recall that the response body for the generate endpoint included the key named response. But with the Olama package, you don't have to parse the JSON to get it. You can simply print the response attribute of the generate response. And if I spell them correctly, again, it helps. And there you go. 
And notice that Visual Studio Code even provided IntelliSense for me. Okay, let's switch to the chat function. First of all, I'm going to have to bring the messages in from the messages.json file. So again, I'll import JSON and then we'll say with open messages. I love how Jupyter Notebook gives you uh, code, gives you IntelliSense for file names. And then that'll be for writing as F and then we'll say messages equals JSON dot load and the file pointer. All right, so now we have our messages. Now I'm going to call the chat function again, passing it llama 3.2 is the model and then the messages. Then the response will be of type chat response. And we will examine this one and open it in a new tab as well. Now recall that the JSON body of the response from the chat endpoint contained a message key and that was another object with a content key and the same idea is going on here. So you can print the output from the LLM simply by saying print response message content. And there we go. Now let's try one other thing. Let's go back to the cell where we called the chat function and let's change the model to phi 4. Now before I execute it, notice down here there's going to be a little timer showing how long it takes to execute the cell. And I'll speed this up through the magic of video. Now look at how long that took. 31.9 seconds. It's actually longer than normal, but if this were an application with an end user, they might have thought the application had hung up on them. And this is a small model with a short prompt. But that's also why we can stream the response. So to stream this response, I'm going to add the stream keyword argument and set it to true. Next, I can iterate over each chunk in the response. And each chunk is going to be of type chat response. So I can print out chunk dot message dot content for each one. So now what you'll see is you'll see the chunks being streamed and being displayed as they are streaming. Now that might have been a little bit hard to see, so I'm going to make one more modification. First I'm going to clear this output. I'm going to make one more modification and this will prevent the print function from starting on a new line. Now even though that took 14.5 seconds, it didn't seem like that long. And this is how ChatGPT works. If you had to wait for an entire response to be generated before seeing it, no one would be using the application. So in this video you saw how to use the Python Olama package, which is essentially a Python API that makes it easier to write Python applications with Olama. And you saw how to access both the generate and chat functionality, and you saw how to work with the response types from the Olama package. And you saw how to use streaming responses. Thanks for watching.